What happens when a brown house spider and a redback spider live too close for comfort? The neighborhood will never be the same. This log has become a sort of bug housing estate. Residents come and go. Visitors drop by, get eaten. Suburban life goes on. Sometimes you'll have several animals sitting in very close proximity to each other, where it's a bit of a standoff. I can kill you, you can kill me. Who's going to make the first move? This redback is tolerating a neighboring brown house spider. They're actually biological cousins, but keep to themselves, even though it's hard to tell whose web is whose. The redback has snared a beetle 10 times her own weight. Her web is one of the stickiest and strongest in the spider business. If it was scaled up to the thickness of climbing rope, it could snare a jumbo jet in flight. Next door, a brown house spider has her hands full. She's landed a supersized meal with a dangerous kick. Like the redback, she combines a sticky web with fast wrapping. It sets up trap lines in its lair. Once detected, it'll drop down and attack with a barrage of silk. Her fangs are small and deliver powerful venom. But this time, she may have bitten off more than she can chew. Another neighbor, a fellow brown house, thinks the grasshopper is in her web. It's a neighborhood dispute that's about to turn ugly. You've got spiders that are eating the same prey and are competing for food in a relatively small space. And at some point, these animals are going to come in conflict. Neither brown house has any intention of backing down. The neighbor moves first and starts a wrapping frenzy. Not only has she lost her meal, the original brown house is now losing her life as she's bound and gagged at her own dinner party. A deadly bite seals the deal. One brown house spider has just killed another one, even though they're the same animal. But this is not unusual in nature. Fratricide or cannibalism is quite common. Just because you're related doesn't mean you're not dinner. But the neighborhood dispute is about to escalate as the redback from next door joins the fray. Given that they're close to one another, this face-off is going to end in the death of one of these spiders. But which one? That's up to chance. Next, warring neighbors face off. Then, a serial killer dives into a deadly trap. Inside a crowded log, two brown house spiders went to war over dinner. Now, one's a meal herself. But hostilities aren't over yet. A neighbor from across the street, a redback, has decided to join in. The neighborhood fight is about to get even nastier. 
on the world's stickiest tightrope. Each spider tries to stay clear of the other's spinning legs. The first to start their rap of death wins. They're so evenly matched, the tiniest false move will spell disaster. The redback puts one foot wrong. She's stuck. Seizing her chance, the brown house spins furiously, wrapping her opponent's legs. The brown house spider's most deadly weapon is its silk. It has these long combed legs that it can use to throw it forward like a deadly crochet. With all her strength, the redback can't break free. She's cocooned alive. The brown house spider's fangs are very small, so it'll only bite once the prey is firmly secured with the silk. The brown house has already had her appetizer. The red back makes a tasty entree. Now the neighborhood bruiser sits back and waits for dessert to come by. When a wolf spider meets a Sydney funnel web spider, it's a deadly contest between the old and the new. Although there are almost 40,000 species of spider, they come in two main categories, modern or primitive. Like this Sydney funnel web, a dinosaur. It's changed little over millions of years. In terms of temperament, the Sydney funnel webs are just ill-tempered, cranky spiders. It's the grumpy old man of the bug world. It's still around today because it's a successful hunter. And the key to its reign are these. Two of the biggest, most powerful jaws in Spiderland, backed by super venom. You don't survive for several hundred million years without being effective predators and being good at what you do. So the funnel webs may not have many diverse uh, behaviors, but in fact, what they do, they do very well. But there are downsides to being spider version 1.0. It can hardly see from its eight eyes. Its lumbering frame isn't very fast and its lungs are underdeveloped, so it's exhausted quickly. It mostly lies in wait, in moist, shady corners of the forest, with a small web funnel at the entrance. What characterizes these webs is it has a narrow funnel or a narrow retreat that the spider lives in. So it may have a hole in a log that's covered in silk, and then it runs out from this uh, retreat in order to capture prey. But what happens when this prehistoric monster comes face to face with a modern day warrior? Will the old still outgun the new? Next, the ultimate showdown, where winner takes all. In the world of monster bugs, there are two types of spider, modern and primitive. This is spider version 1.0, the prehistoric Sydney funnel web. 
Sydney funnel web is not only a seriously cranky spider, but they really tend not to back off. They're really an ill-natured spider. Their fangs are oriented parallel to one another, and so they strike down. And the way the funnel whip does this is it rears its carapace up and then strikes repeatedly down with enormous force. The force is reputed to be sufficient to kill a mouse, to crush a mouse skull. This cricket came too close. And the funnel web's caveman table manners make short work of any prey. While it may be showing its age, the funnel web is always ready to take on newcomers. This is Spider version 2.0. Evolving much later, the modern wolf spider is faster, stronger, and loaded with stamina. The wolf spider is so fast on its feet, it can cover two feet in a single second. That would be the equivalent of me doing a 100-meter dash in one second. With state-of-the-art eyes, nothing escapes its attention. The wolf spider has four large eyes on the top of its head, but also has four smaller eyes coming across in a row in the front. This gives it fantastic night vision and some of the best vision of any spider. It lies in wait for a hapless victim like this cricket. He is fast and powerful, basically the cheetah of the spider world. He hits his prey so fast and so hard, they literally get bowled over. Sharp-eyed, fleet-footed, packing powerful venom, the wolf spider is a major upgrade from its primitive cousin. Though it can outstalk and outrun any contemporary, sometimes it has to face off with its prehistoric past and a test of evolution. The wolf spider's best defense is his ability to outrun or outjump pretty much anyone. Although wolf spiders are faster, wolf spiders have vision on their side, I don't think wolf spiders are as intrinsically tough and ill-natured as a Sydney funnel web is. <laughs> it's a full moon, and the wolf spider is on the prowl. Night vision and advanced weaponry ready to go. Also on the offense, a funnel web, its legs sensing the slightest movement on its trip lines. The funnel webs will rear up, and you can see venom dripping out of the tips of their fangs. And they will stay in this position for 10, 15 minutes, ready to strike should uh, the potential predator or prey come any closer. The encounter quickly turns into a standoff as two killers, close enough to touch, weigh their next move. It's a tricky standoff, like two gunfighters waiting for the other one to flinch. The funnel web spider has bigger fangs, but the wolf spider has the speed. One thing is for certain, the next move will be fatal. The funnel web strikes first. As the funnel web's massive jaws rip open the wolf spider, venom floods in. Today, old beats new. Ancient history wins the day. 
Although dinosaurs never made it to our present day, it's a different story in the bug world. Here, living history proves that new isn't always better. When two bizarre spiders go into battle, it'll be a bug fight with a difference. One jumps, the other spits. For all its benign natural beauty, the rainforest harbors some truly odd creatures. The metallic green jumping spider looks like an eight-legged disco dancer. But it's an agile, spring-loaded killer. Jumping spiders typically make the largest leaps to get from one location to another. When they're getting ready to attack, they'll use much smaller leaps so they can aim with absolute precision and get the bite in that perfect spot. The jumping spider might be tiny. From end to end, no more than a thumbnail. What it lacks in size, it makes up for with sheer athletic ability. And it's got something else, brains. Jumping spiders display a level of awareness that is remarkable, far beyond most other spiders or bugs. They're intelligent and inquisitive, but most remarkably, they can adapt their hunting as the situation changes. It has all the animal cunning of a jungle cat. Jumping spiders are sometimes referred to as eight-legged cats, mostly because of their very large eyes, but they're also very feline in their predatory behavior. They'll stalk their prey, they'll circle it, they'll leap onto it and then bring it down with their fangs. In the human world, stalking is a crime. In a bug's world, it's a skill that puts food on the table. But the jumping spider isn't the only clever predator in this jungle. There's a serious rival the only creature on planet Earth that spits deadly silk from its fangs. The spitting spiders are generally pretty small, shy spiders. They've got six eyes, which is relatively unusual. And they've got an absolute unique weapon, and that's the ability to spit silk. They rear up. They start vibrating their fangs and then ejecting silk out of their fangs. It's really sticky. It contracts and effectively just pins an insect or another spider down to the ground. Most spiders have silk glands in their abdomens, but the spitting spider comes with reinforcements two extra glands in its oversized head. The spitting spiders have modified their venom gland. The front of the venom gland produces venom the same way in other spiders, but the back end is modified so that it's producing a combination of glue and silk. A deadly concoction is about to be unleashed on this unsuspecting cockroach. So fast, the human eye can barely see it. The sticky silk shoots out and pins the cockroach to the bark. It'll come in and sting the prey very rapidly and then back off and wait until the venom actually works on the roach. A cockroach isn't much of a foe. For a spitting spider, it's just food. But it's a different matter when the food can fight back.
In a bug world jungle, two pocket-sized predators are on the prowl. One, an expert stalker, able to launch itself at an enemy like a jungle cat. The other, armed with an assault weapon straight from science fiction. Fans that spit deadly silk with pinpoint accuracy. We both win. The spitting spider is able to shoot gluey spit out of its fangs at incredible speeds that rapidly pins down its prey. It's just a matter of time before the predators cross paths and cross swords. Like a leopard, the jumping spider has stalked its victim silently, relentlessly. It leaps at the spitting spider. But it's off the mark. The jumping spider has made a mistake here. It has lost that advantage of surprise. The spitting spider has all of the advantage. The spitting spider takes a shot. It goes wide. But some of the sticky silk clips the jumping spider's leg. And the spitting spider fires off another round. Only in slow motion can the airborne mass of sticky silk be seen. As the jumping spider is glued flat in the fork of a branch, the spitting spider comes in to administer the kill shot. This just shows how important it is to get it right the first time. If you don't, there's a really good chance you won't be around to fight another day. The jumping spider will never jump again, as its insides are sucked out. All that remains is the solitary reminder to look before you leap. What happens when a white-tailed spider meets the shadow world's cellar spider? Someone will disturb the peace. Meet the cellar spider. Its thin, pole-like limbs make it look somewhat fragile, even weak. But nothing's further from the truth. The cellar spiders are actually pretty good at killing other spiders. They don't necessarily specialize on killing other spiders, but they're really good at it when they get the chance. From their hidden vantage points, they pick off passing prey. Small or large, it makes no difference. And those spindly legs with their multiple sections. Have the clearance of a monster truck and are as nimble as high-speed knitting needles. Their legs are long and lean and effective for keeping everything at arm's length. They can immobilize rivals from a safe distance by wrapping them in silk before moving in for the kill. Their fangs are tiny, but pack mean venom. Elsewhere on the rocky outcrop, another spider prepares for action. Compared to the cellar spider, she's a bruiser. The white-tailed spider. The white-tailed spider is a wandering assassin. This deadly stalker lurks in the shadows. The white-tail is a master spider killer. She's three times the weight of the cellar spider. In Spiderland, she's a super heavyweight fighter.
Even a night stalking commando like the Wolf Spider can be overpowered in an instant. The white tail spider's main weapon is surprise. It rushes out of the shadows to deliver a fatal bite. The white tail pumps digestive juices through her victims, then sucks them dry. Few spiders walk away from the white tail. Would a delicate cellar spider take on a super heavyweight? You'd be surprised. I don't think the white tail has a chance. Next, weaving a web of destruction. These are the shadowlands of the bug world, hidden places where dirty deeds are done under cover of darkness. This white-tailed spider is looking for an easy kill. She's checking out a rock ledge that happens to be a cellar spider's home. And the delicate homeowner will defend its territory to the death, no matter how huge the invader. The cellar spider starts a war dance. One of the things that cellar spiders do to avoid being attacked by predators is they swirl on their legs. Another thing that they might do is pump up and down, and they disappear because they're moving so fast they become invisible. The white tail isn't so easily fooled. She holds her ground. Conflict is inevitable. For the white-tailed spider, it's all about getting the first bite in. But the cellar spider moves first. It flicks the white tail onto its web. The white tail tries to regain its footing. But the cellar spider goes into silk spinning overdrive. From a safe distance, its legs lasso the white tail six times every second. But the white tail is strong. She keeps breaking free. Cellar spider's silk isn't the strongest nor stickiest in the spider world. But there's a lot of it. And every throw counts. Hundreds of silk ropes entangle the white tail. In a desperate last effort, she tries to slash her way to freedom with her huge fangs. The white tail spider will use its fangs to cut through the silk. If it can get out, it'll run for its life. But the cellar spider counters, hoisting her victim higher. It's spinning too much silk, and the white tail's jaws may not be enough. Thousands of silk ropes finally immobilize the white tail. Enough for the cellar spider to move in for the kill. It delivers its deadly payload and leaves the venom to do its work. A delicate spinner outguns a big brute. And the Shadowlands are quiet once more. But they won't be for long. When two predatory jumping spiders come face to face, 
Which one will have the jump on the other? In the Battle of the Leaping Assassins, the long-jawed jumping spider is armed to the teeth. The long-jawed jumping spider is, in many regards, a fairly typical jumping spider. But what makes these spiders unusual is that they've got these incredibly long, thick chelicera with long fangs that are almost half its body length. Some spider fangs are barely visible, not these. These have the potential to be really good weapons. That's bad news for all kinds of prey. Not only that, but you can't sneak past a killer whose eyes are everywhere. Jumping spiders have incredible vision. They've moved a number of the eyes back on their carapace so that effectively jumping spiders have 360 degree vision. Those two huge eyes, front and center, sense contrast, colors, even ultraviolet light. This smaller spider is already a marked bug. But the long-jawed jumping spider needs all of its visual acuity to make the kill. If you're jumping long distances, you need to have good depth perception so you actually land on your prey and effectively catch it. Death comes in an instant as those elongated fangs skewer the prey. With brains and brawn, the long-jawed jumping spider is more than a match for most bugs its size. But how will it fare when its opponent shares exactly the same talents? Now, the issue here is that we've got jumping spider against jumping spider. The green jumping spider has all the skills and all the smarts of the long jaw. In the eyes of some, she's also the supermodel of the spider world. That green jumping spider is absolutely gorgeous and big. In the minuscule world of jumping spiders, big is a relative term. The body is compact and the legs short. The perfect build for a spider that leaps onto its prey. When it comes to jumping, these guys are in a class of their own. They can launch themselves an amazing 20 times their own body length. Astounding. More often than not, the jump is a winner. This time, the prey is a fly. Also renowned for its speed and its wide field of vision. The green jumping spider measures the distance. The key to the kill is securing the victim as quickly as possible. The two front pair of legs are quite well developed, and they have these large spine-like hairs on them. It's like nature gave them a cute little face, but then gave them these mean legs to give a little bit of street cred. When you encounter spider beauty like this, you can guarantee the outcome won't be pretty. Both of them have same capabilities, except the long-jawed spider has much, much longer fangs than the other spider. On the other hand, the green jumping spider has size and power to its advantage. So in this case, it really is 
who has the element of surprise. Next, jumping assassins fight the ultimate duel. Then, two huntsmen face off in the forest. When two species of jumping spider target each other, it's anyone's guess as to which one will lose and which one will live to leap again. It's a close match. The long jaw might have bigger fangs, but, you know, size isn't everything. Then again, sheer body bulk might win the day. Both the spiders have fairly similar intellectual and visual capabilities, but one has a huge size advantage. The larger green jumping spider makes the first move. It's a Mexican standoff. Who will blink first? The long jaw plays safe, but the green beauty isn't giving up. The key in this entire battle is whoever catches the other spider first is going to win. She stalks her opponent. And scores a direct hit. Her fangs might be small, but they drip with deadly venom. These guys have a really fast-acting venom. The long jaw's legs have already started to curl up. A sure sign it's about to pass its use-by date. As the long jaw discovered to his dismay, the supermodel is more than just a pretty face. Looks can kill.